Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Benito Gonzalez. Thank you, Didi, for the introduction. Yeah. So, uh, um, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do a, an overview of ViewPortal and then a bit of a showcase at the end. Um, try not to make this too much of a technical talk and more of a high-level overview of ViewPortal. Um, kind of um, the first three sections we're going to talk about. Um, well. The, the three sections are what campus portals often implement, um, how to do configuration and customization, and then we'll wrap up with uh, a couple of examples of, of portals that are out there in the wild. Let's set up. So one of the big things with Hue Portal 5 recently is that we've uh, really adopted web components. Web components are a great technology. Uh, traditionally, uPortal had been using portlets. Um, portlets are a great way to um, present isolated information that can be very distinct and come from different sources. There's uh, limited interaction between them, so they work great with the portal. So you set up a portal, you want to have different types of content showing up on the page. Uh, the content can vary. Uh, from just some app launchers into other applications to notifications, um, uh, RSS feeds and calendars, uh, and, and quite a bit of custom information such as student grades um, and financial aid. Uh, that was a great model a decade and a half ago now with newer technology and newer approaches when it comes to the web such as uh, pages that don't do a complete page refresh but actually just portions of the page refresh um, led us to kind of look for options something other than our traditional portlets uh, so we certainly jumped on the bandwagon of web components once we figured out how to get them to work with older browsers. It's now even less of an issue now in 2022, but a few years ago it was one of our challenges. That all behind us now, uh, we're doing a lot of things with web components and um, continue to replace older portlets with these new web components. Here's a list of, of current web components in the uPortal ecosystem. Uh, there's a handful more, but this captures kind of the, the more well-known web components. And in particular, I'm going to focus on four content areas. These are the content items that most universities uh, will, will implement. All right, so notifications, that's critical. If Without notifications to the user, there's not a lot of uh, information sent to them that's specific to them. So notifications a lot of times would be zeroed into that particular user, such as overdue books, um, some fee they're behind, um, some other announcement from another unit at the institution that is specific for them. The API template, on the other hand, is the opposite. It will uh, pull in information uh, from an API and allow an implementer to pretty much do anything they want on the page without JavaScript. And so it's a really quick, convenient way to get content out there on their portal. Kind of the next uh, batch of web components, there's kind of really two groups. There's the carousels and then there's the menu and grid. I'll show some examples of that. Carousels are great. To, uh, to show a collection of information that's related. Uh, and you're familiar with carousels if you've seen Netflix. Right? Uh, and then the grid is a great way to display app launchers and other collections of icons that the user might want to click on and get further information. And then just highlighting that last waffle menu is just an example of something that appear, appears whenever you take your portal into a smaller screen size, uh, such as uh, a mobile device. So what do these actually look like? So here's notifications. Uh, you'll notice on the left side here, this is a pop-up. So if a notification has a certain um, set of criteria, maybe it's it has a high priority or it's part of a specific group, such as 
a group named alerts, it might just pop up on the screen um, and require the user to click a button before they can continue to the portal. Um, on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have a notification icon. It's this little bell. It'll show you a number if you have unread notifications, but otherwise it takes up very little real estate and really doesn't call a lot of attention to itself, especially once you've read all the unread notifications. Um, it shows you a list of about 10 notifications at any particular time. And then you can see uh, at the bottom where it says, see all notifications, and that will allow you to open up notification list. And here we have uh, more details. Um, usually the notifications are in a structured format. So there's the, the, the title, the main message itself, um, dates around when it's active, applicable or not, and even URLs. So the notifications list is a great way to display a lot of those items for a particular user. So it's a good list. So this is something that is implemented in almost every portal I've seen. It's usually backed by not just one service, but a couple of services. Sometimes there's a database behind it. Maybe the database um, is, uh, is actually the SIS database. Uh, maybe it's an LMS, but we can bring in information from different backend services, as long as we know who the user is or some kind of uh, metadata about the user, we can go and grab information that's custom to them. So another class of content that's starting to be much more popular is the API template view. Um, I don't have any really good examples uh, right now to share with you, but it's essentially a way to bring in JSON from some API service. Again, we have the ability to share with that API who the current user is that's making the request for the JSON. That JSON can then be uh, referenced as tokens inside of HTML with CSS. So we've seen some amazing things done, such as uh, the ability to show um, current grades or course list and also financial aid. If there's some due date or maybe a, a warning about around financial aid. You can put a red box around it. That's something I've seen recently. Um, and, and another thing that's concerning is not to allow financial aid details to be shown right on the screen. Uh, so again, this is CSS and HTML. We can collapse that content so it's not visible in case a student's looking at their portal and friends are gathered around they don't necessarily want everyone to see that. So it starts out collapsed and click on a, a, an icon and it opens it up. Um, and if there's no JavaScript needed, uh, we could probably deliver content via this API template view. So it's super flexible and uh, uh, really easy to use. Content carousel and dashboard carousel. So things you'd imagine um, if if you've seen, again, uh, a video service like Netflix, it's a collection of, of cards with arrows that allow you to scroll uh, through the long list of what's shown. It can be icons, it could be an RSS feed. Oftentimes in this example, it's just uh, categories of portlets. Um, the top list is uh, a list of favorites and um, that's dynamically populated through uPortal. Um, so that one's very flexible. We see that a lot now in portals. And then the second one is more interesting. It's the dashboard carousel. So if you have content that's customized to fit within a short, or sorry, small footprint, you can create these live dashboards where the information is dynamic. It's actually rendering portlets or web uh, components right inside of those blocks. There's buttons and um, the arrows on the side to, to navigate those. So we find this is a great way to deliver uh, a lot of detailed content in a condensed footprint. And then here's an example of a content grid in menu. It's the lower half. 
this is integrated with a header with the user profile. That part is not used as much, but certainly this uh, grid in the lower area, along with the filter categories and a search bar, uh, by default, the admin tools in uPortal 5 now leverage this to display all the tools that an administrator may want to use to manage the portal. And then in this last slide, I wanted to talk a little bit about portlets. So we still have a couple of stragglers. Um, the announcements portlet is something that we see implemented quite often. Um, announcements is the ability to author content right in the portal. Um, there is like a publishing process where announcements can be created. Uh, another group uh, can manage or accept or deny that and uh, set the time frame that those are displayed. So that's announcements over on the right. There's also been an enhancement where if you configure announcements so they're graphical, we, could, we can use announcements as we see in the middle, student spotlights. It is based on the announcements portlet, but every announcement that's created is essentially uh, a graphic that fits within a certain size. Uh, and then it's just a kind of, uh, image carousel there in the middle. So we've done some enhancements there, and that one will probably be one of the last ones we convert to web components. Similarly, uPortal uh, can easily consume RSS feeds, and we do that quite a bit as opposed to um, calendars. Uh, we don't see calendars as much as we used to. Now we'll see things, uh, again, in kind of the newsreader RSS feed, where maybe you have um, a football team schedule Right, so it'd be dates and some descriptions and some links out to another marketing website or sports website. So those are the most common uh, types of content we see in portals today, at least for the modern ones. So let's touch a little bit on how to configure and extend uPortal. And really the key here is uPortal 5 has a new repo called uPortal Start. So if you want to create a portal for yourself, you don't go to a uPortal uh, repository, you create a, a clone of the uPortal Start repository. And the focus of this repository is really just to capture your configuration and customizations. So configuration and property files are there. There's some starting points um, where you can populate a, a global properties file and then a uh, uPortal properties file that's specific for configurations there. You can also add uh, configuration uh, files for specific portlets. Another thing that this uPortal start provides is uh, a starting point for custom skins. There's a task that generates a custom skin based on the, the main one, and they can jump in and, and modify uh, styling sheets and XML files. And that leads us to the next thing. If just changing colors and styling isn't enough, you actually want to change the HTML that's generated on the page. Uh, you can copy files from uPortal repo into uPortal start. You know, they have to be in the right location, but you'll be able to have full control over those theme files, the ones that generate the page. So moving past uh, visuals, getting into the meat of the code, uh, we also have support for context overrides. So if you're familiar with spring beans and how those Java beans are being configured, we have an ability to override those without having to trudge through the uh, 20 plus context files that we have in the main U portal. And you can just capture your customizations, often things like how to bring in user information from LDAP or a database. Um, and then that also supports custom code and adding web apps right to uPortal Start. The key here is that instead of customizing code and losing your customizations in this huge code base like we used to do in uPortal 4, now your custom code is pretty much isolated and that's all that exists in uPortal Start. There's no source code, Java source code in the uPortal Start. All right, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna kind of power through some of these examples. So kind of putting it all together, um, here's an example of a traditional portal. 
uh, a lot of these are a mix of portlets, again, you see announcements, and um, some soffits, which is a way to bring in content from the back end that could be written not in Java or even exist in the same uh, servers as uPortal, but other back end servers. Uh, there's a heavy use of React on this page. All right here's a much more traditional uh, Kansas University where um, these are all portlets. This is very much a traditional portal um, with uh, soon to have some adoptions of web components. That's my understanding. Again, you see Riverside's um, uh, a portal. I love this one. It while it's still traditional, they've done a lot of work around the graphics and imagery and I just really like the style. This really to me is the uh, pinnacle of what a traditional portal would look like. My UW, they've decided that they didn't uh, want to continue developing in the old portlet way so they created a an angular front end uh, that's card based, but as you click on, so this is their portal, but as, and it's a it's a Angular front end application. But as you click any of these cards, you will get redirected to their portal. It's almost transparent, and the portal looks just like this. So it's um, common for users to think they're still in the same application, and that was the intent. Uh, here's another rewrite of the front end. Foothill De Anza um, uses uPortal mostly for group information, user uh, attributes, and, and details. Uh, they don't use the layout engine or much in the way of content. Um, they just consume those APIs, and then they have a React front end uh, that pulls in the, the content based on those user attributes. But getting back to the portal, here we see this front big image here is one of the carousels. Um, down where it says banner, that's uh, a, a, one of the grid web components. This was while well, they're prototyping before they got all their imagery uh, nailed down. So it looks much nicer. And then off to the side, uh, this is uh, the newsreader kind of providing information uh, broken out by date. So this layout has very little customization. It's all it's almost exclusively configuration. Uh, here's this is a prototype for Pal Poly Pomona. Here they're using uh, the dashboard carousel kind of in the middle. Uh, they didn't go with this approach in the end, but this is just such a great use of the content um, that, that we like to, to showcase it. And you can see at the very bottom, we kind of clipped off uh, one of the other carousels. There's the waffle menu, so a lot of, uh, and the hamburger menu on the left, a lot of web components. Again, there's some customization just because they're pretty advanced with their portal, but a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, the, the page imagery um, is driven by standard components now. And this is my last slide. So uh, our friends <laughs> Julien over in uh, France is, is the one who first created this web com component built out of web components. Um, there's the red piece. He donated a lot of this work uh, to the community and we've picked it up and ran with it, enhanced it. And um, it was just a, a great collaboration. We're looking forward to some new web components and um, continuing our refactoring of replacing old stodgy portlets with these new, more advanced web components. All right, that's my walkthrough. Uh, any questions? It seems you're getting a lot of feedback in the chat about, you know, how good it looks, um, which is fantastic to hear. Um, I know I myself have a question. Uh, going back to the beginning, we had you had spoken about um, so you could keep your presentation showing since we are seeing your screen. If you'll go um, up to the beginning, you were showing some of the notification portlets um, at the top, which went down to I believe it was ten items that were shared on your next slide down. There you yeah. go. So, um, it, um, is there a way to, to decide what that number will be? Uh, I'd have to double check. I believe that is uh, a configuration value. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Um, I, I know we had to add a, a customization where, by default, it always showed the number of unread 
notifications, but uh, one institution in particular was interested in just seeing how many notifications in in total a user mm -hmm. had, and so that number is is now something that could be uh, modified. Uh, through configuration. Um, I'm fairly certain also the list can be as well. There's even some styling that can happen without, um, you know, much customer, much too much work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Um, uh, any questions from the audience? You have a notification in the chat from uh, Andre and asking if that's Fiosun. Uh, no, uh, Fiosun is. Uh, notifications uh, backbone service uh, we have uh, helped someone implement um, an integration between Fiosin notification backbone and U portal and the notification uh, web components do uh, pull information from that service and so one of the key parts of of Fiosin is that there is this alerts channel so that would cause one of these pop-ups in case there was a fire on campus or something. Does that answer your question? 